Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to episode 20 of Pwn. 20, 20, 20, 2, 0. Okay, so I don't know how you guys are supposed to pronounce it, but um, 20, 20. We, in Singapore, we call it 20. Sorry, I'm fidgeting around. So anyway, uh, in the previous video, episode 19, I asked you guys to leave me some questions in the comments below uh, for a Q&A section, and I will be answering your questions. Now, the cool thing is, uh, not, not many of you ask questions, but... You guys ask quite sensible questions. So uh, I'm sitting here now with your questions all um, typed up and uh, ready for me to read in no particular order. And uh, this episode of course is not going to revolve just around the uh, questions answering part but also uh, to show you, you know, like what I promised you guys, uh, the comparison between the Stefan darts for the silicone tip darts versus other type of darts, other type of Stefan darts because firing it at my back is not a fair comparison alright so um, okay I'm gonna start off with the first question awesome nerfer 1999 asks me do you play sports if yes what uh could dance be considered a sport um hopping I like dancing so um hip hop I don't know it's not really a sport but if I play a sport then uh, I used to play basketball but I suck at it though uh, apart from that, no, no other sports. I'm sorry, I'm a lazy person. Okay? Next question. Rippy Wooda... Rippy Woodall. Yeah, 93. Rippy Woodall 93 asks me, Mac or PC? For now, it's PC. Uh, I have a laptop. I have my PC at home. Uh, most of my programs, my editing software, be it audio or video or, or, or photographs, they're all uh, PC-based. Even my DJ software, uh, I'm using Tractor 2. <coughs> Excuse me, Tractor 2.5 right now actually. Um, I'm still running it on a PC. So everything uh, that I have is all PC based. I do not know if I will make the switch over to Mac. That depends on, you know, where the future takes me. But for now, it's PC. Okay, the next question comes from Zach Ma. And Zach Ma asks me, How do you get hold of new blasters like the Elite Joke on TP? I'm assuming that TP stands for Taobao. Taobao is actually TB. If in, in Chinese or in Han, you pinging, uh, a P would be pronounced as Pao rather than Bao. So it's Taobao. Okay? So, uh, yeah, I sometimes when I'm free, I will scour or troll the Taobao website and I will look for, I guess, interesting thumbnails of, of sales stuff or products that they have on sale especially when you type in nerf in the search column and then after that i use an agent service the one i'm using is actually by pika um and sometimes it just depends on luck like i luck out uh, i found the elite joke and i decided to order it the downside of ordering from taobao though is that you seldom get things in box especially when it's bootleg stuff or leaked, leaked blasters uh, they come just you know in a separate pack or in some kind of a crappy packaging uh, the only time when I actually got a couple of blasters with the box I mean actually three maybe it was the uh, XSL Air Bazooka or Air Rocket Launcher whatever it's called the Hawkeye Big Bad Bow um, and that box was alright and the other one was the Sonic series um, Vortex what was it Nitron? Was it? I'm sorry, pardon me if I get the name wrong. Yeah, um, there no, wasn't Nitron, it's uh, what was it? Ah, never mind, you know. So, anyway, the box was like broken. So, yeah, that's kind of crappy. So, yeah. Okay, LSSJ Brogetta. LSSJ Brogetta asks me, What is your favorite genre of music? Uh, it's funk. I like funk music. I know a lot of you guys would be surprised and you expect me to say dubstep. Dubstep is a genre I like but my favorite music is funk and what kind of funk let me just demonstrate for you guys um, excuse me okay, let me just give you an example uh, this is what we call p-funk it's very fun so here we go like that uh, that's not it I can't seem to find it right now let's see if I can find any here oh okay here This is the kind of funk that I like. Funk music. Yeah. 
Let me see if I can find another one for you guys to reference. Okay, so anyway, this song is like that. This is called Let It Whip by Daz Band. It goes like that. Okay, here's another song. This is a classic, this is a classic, but it's a remix. Taking you back in the days. Yeah, this is the kind of funk that I like, okay? So, uh, yeah, enough with the funk music. Now I'm just gonna play back that smooth, flowing R&B thingy that I was listening to just now. Uh, okay, here we go. Turn it down a little bit. So I hope that gives you an idea of uh, what P-Funk is like. I like funk a lot. Okay, what do you think of Airsoft? Okay, same uh, same user, LSSJ Bogeta asked me, what do you think of Airsoft? Now, someone's already answered uh, you in the comments below. Um, as a reply to your comment or your question that airsoft is not allowed in Singapore um, I think okay I'll just give my answer anyway I think airsoft is kind of fun uh, I probably will never ever get a chance to experience airsoft but I have experienced paintball now um, I would say paintball is pretty fun it's it's a lot more intense than nerf is of course it's a lot more controlled here in Singapore um, ammunition limited but you go as a group you know, and you literally pay a lot of money just to go fire off some paintballs. Um, the downside to it is all of the paintball markers here in Singapore are all the same model and the same shape. So um, it'd be cool if you know you could modify and reshell your paintball markers. I know that some people do. <coughs> hint, hint, <coughs> <are> fun. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're watching, bro. But anyway, uh, I think SL is cool. Uh, it might be a tad dangerous here in Singapore because of the way the public behaves or some stupid irrational and irresponsible children will behave but uh, I think SL should be pretty cool and if I ever get the chance to I would definitely love to give it a shot and try uh, not give it a shot but you get what I mean okay uh, the next two questions come from Cool Pants McGee 1 so Cool Pants McGee one asked me, are you selling any of your guns? Uh, I don't have any guns, I have blasters for sale. Sorry about that bro, I'm quite uh, anal about the terminology. Yes, I have some blasters on sale. Um, I can't really name you exactly what they are right now. I do have my uh, Pump Replace Busby Ultimate Missile Blast on sale. Um, you can check out the Nerf SG forums for my sales thread if you guys want. The reason why I don't post my sales thread on other forums is because I live in Singapore and um, a lot of you, I mean majority of you uh, are actually located outside of Singapore and I don't want to you know, waste your time and make you pay extra shipping and stuff when you can get cool stuff in your country anyway. So yeah, uh, and second question is, and if so, how much of your top how much for your top 5 coolest ones? Okay, let me say that again. And if so, how much for your top 5 coolest ones? Vintage or really great blasters? <clears throat> uh, the blasters I have for sale are a bunch. Uh, I guess a varying bunch. I have some vintage ones. Like for example, I have a chain blazer for sale. I have... Um, I have an auto grip for sale. And I have like newer stuff. For example, I have my, like I said, my ultimate missile blast and I might probably put more of my stuff on sale. But I wouldn't say, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to categorize into which is my coolest because this is all in the eye of the beholder. What is cool to me might not be cool to you, you know, because like everybody has their own favorite blast and stuff. So yeah, if you want to know the price of what I'm selling, go check out the forums. The unfortunate thing about the Nerf SG forums is that you guys have to actually sign up for an account. The good thing is the account is free, so uh, just go do it. All right, uh, the next three questions, in fact, comes from Kimosabi Likes Turtles. What is your favorite blaster? Uh, can I say the SuperTech 9000? Um, okay, I'll be realistic. Uh, my favorite vintage blaster would, I mean, besides being the novelty of the SuperTech 9000, would have to be the SuperMax 1000 or the SuperMax 500. But I would say that my favorite is the SuperMax 1000. 
um, yeah it's it's just cool <laughs> like a super soaker it's, it's just cool uh, what okay next question sorry which do you like best out of Airzone, Busby and Leonard or Leonard um, okay my favorite blast of all time is the triple shot or the hand cannon by Leonard or Leonard but um, if you want me to compare between the brands I would say Busby um, to me Airzone they kind of pass off as like Toys R Us uh, version of you know reselling blasters I don't really know but I would say Busby because um, Busby are the people that actually made things like your Busby Big Blast and Busby Ultimate Missile Blast you know uh, two of the to me the best air blasters out there in the market and now you have things like the Panther the Orion or the Range Master and uh, what else do we have I don't know just a whole bunch of Busby stuff and they're all pretty cool and they have really great performance at a much cheaper price as compared to uh, you know their competitors so Busby now the last question from Kimosabi likes turtles is what blaster modification are you most proud of I would say that my that the blaster modification that I'm most proud of is my very first long shot with the long shot front gun integration on it <coughs> I've never showed it <coughs> excuse me sorry I'm having some phlegm <coughs> I've never showed it to you guys uh, you know my viewers I've never showed it to majority of the nerfers in Singapore it's a private thing I guess um, I still have it though <laughs> if you dig hard enough you'll find it in the modifications thread a long time back <coughs> I might show it to you guys someday soon I don't know but the reason why I'm so proud of it is because it's a simple front gun integration that's it I did not uh, do any like shotgun pump or you know um, putting a torch light at the bottom or putting an air tank it was just a front gun integration for the sake of doing it and the reason why I was so proud of it is because first it was my very first long shot I learned how to modify the long shot a direct plunger system for the first time because of that uh, I learned things the hard way like how to remove your bolt on a long shot it was my first official paint job I mean besides the Maverick but it was my first well yeah okay my first official paint job with dry brushing it was the first time uh, putting uh, cosmetic accessories to the blaster uh, what else oh yeah one thing to take note everything was done with manual tools so I had no power tools with me no Dremel nothing just a hacksaw and and just guts and hard work so yeah so that's why I'm the most proud of it uh, I would probably never ever sell it it's like novelty to me just for memories alright so I hope that answers your question <coughs> okay next question comes from <laughs> I am Kao here me Moo nice name bro uh, he says he or he asks or she asks, Psych, how is the progress on the past intercompetition between you, Atani, and Hat? Uh, good question. Uh, I'm still working mine out. I'm having a problem with the trigger. I'm trying to link the trigger up. But, um, ah, I gave you too much information. I'm trying to make the trigger work. Okay? And um, I don't know about Atani and Hat, but all of us um, I mean at the point of time we had some free time and we had some time on our hands to go ahead you know and we had like an abundance of um, ready available uh, pump action shotguns for us to mod but just as we were about to begin work on the mods I guess life caught up with us um, work uh, commitments like the army the military things like that they all just fell into place and they all just took up our time so therefore everything came to a halt uh, we will try of course to find time to continue and finish it you know no one likes to leave a mod unfinished okay so I don't know how long that will take but uh, it will come eventually alright so sorry about it the next question comes from lols8143 and uh, it's cool how did you meet and become friends with Hat and Atani okay that's the first question so the first question uh, how did I meet and become friends with Hat and Atani um, when I first started Nerf, uh, I didn't really know many of the Nerf SG uh, forum members. The person I used to hang out the most with was uh, this guy called Fish, uh, who's not really into Nerf anymore. But um, Fish had this really, really powerful uh, Supermax 1500, and it gave me a scar. I might show it to you guys sometime. It gave me a scar, and um, 
he used to tell me, oh, this guy was 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 uh this this blaster was made by this guy called Atani. Atani's blasters are uh, oh, they they draw blood. I was like, why do I draw blood? So after getting hit, then I understood. So um, he was Atani to me, and Fish was the go-to guy for any air tank related blasters. And uh, at that point of time, I was just fresh into nothing. Everything to me was about springers and you know spring upgrades and. Uh, reinforcing and stuff so the only time or the first time that I actually had contact with Atani was when he actually opened up contracts for Stefan Darts and I approached him and I bought a bunch and then after that I decided okay I'm gonna try um, doing a reshell I'm gonna try and put a mega missile um, air tank into a tornado strike you know, I mean that was, a, that was from a really long time ago those of you who have been watching my videos you know which blaster it is the internal RCV one so uh, that was the first time I actually tried doing a air tank blaster I know it was kind of uh, ambitious you know a reshell and and everything so I actually asked Atani for help and he's really helpful he actually gave me some advice and uh, that is how I got to know Atani better now throughout time I mean over time uh, we hung out more we would meet up more discuss mods and stuff and um, I guess the reason one of the reasons why um, he would speak to me or uh, one of the common points that we would talk about was uh, making videos for YouTube so we were giving each other ideas and stuff so uh, that's how it started I didn't know Hat it was Atani who introduced me to Hat and I met Hat for the first time at one of Atani's wars and found out that he was a really cool guy too just like Atani both of them are actually really very fun guys to be around with uh, they're fun loving they're both very good looking uh, completely opposite from me <laughs> so yeah um, I, I guess I I guess I feel very comfortable being around them so they're like my bros you know yeah uh, okay, so the next question, also from Laws A143, is do me all pass? I would say pump action shotgun pass. Uh, the reason why I want to stay away from a do me is because uh, I hate working on turrets. Um, although I know that Hat has one, Atani has one, even Zekachik, another guy, he has one too. I used to have one. I saw my pass away. Uh, I mean, I saw my do me away. Uh, I might make another one in the near future. I don't know yet. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe a not so flamboyant mod on it, like a standard, you know, just a rebarreling of the turret. I don't know yet. But uh, the reason why I decide, I dis I'm deciding with the pass is because of the sheer amount of um, potential of the plunder tube. It's just huge. It is huge, and uh, it's so easy to mod. You just open it up, remove the front, coupler it, put a hopper, and you're done. You have a war worthy blaster. Even if you don't, if you get like a good uh, dart barrel fit you can actually just muzzle load the darts and they will just vacuum load in so that's the cool thing about uh, pass yep and plus a pass is a lot easier to carry around you know because you don't have such a huge like a uh, 20 round turret in the front was it 20 rounds? Oh, it was 12 right? it was 12 sorry my bad okay the next question comes from the spider internet show my friend What's up, man? Uh, how did your custom darts work? Were they good or bad? Was his question. So, how did your custom darts work? Now that we're on that topic, I will share with you guys my firing demonstration or my firing comparison of the darts. Now, the reason why I'm doing it is because, like I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, it was not fair to um, the people who made those silicon tips and who sold the FBR, you know, as a comparison to just show you guys that I got hit on, on my back and you saw like red swells and, and bruises and stuff so I decided I would take a box and I would use three different types of darts uh, and I'll let the rest of the video do the talking for you so here you go enjoy it hey what's up guys so now this is the part where I'm gonna do the damage test and I have with me a super soaker tornado blast or tornado strike sorry uh, box and I just want to declare to you guys that there already is a hole here and here and this is made by the 3k that I was holding just now it actually pierced the cardboard through both sides so I've actually marked it out with some black marker so that you guys will know that um, these are actually old holes so uh, there's nothing else other than the single hole on each side uh, just so I want to declare to you guys okay let's fire off at this half I think that should be better now uh, the blaster that we have in our hands that we'll be using for this test is a pretty war uh, standard you know uh, blaster 
that is why I'm actually using it. But let me just turn off the fan. Oh no, it's okay. I'll just balance it like that. Okay, so this is, as I was saying, it's a pretty standard uh, primary for walls, and um, this already has a, a Hornet pump in it. So um, just so you guys know, okay. Now uh, I have three different types of darts, and I'll be firing three of each type of dart. So the first type of dart is, of course, a standard hot glue dome that is generally not allowed in Singaporean wars. The second type of dart that we'll be using is a standard felt tip slug Stefan and the last type of dart is the new silicone tip dart. Okay, so these are the blue silicone tip ones. So I'll be firing off in this particular order three hot glue domes followed by three uh, felt tip Stefans and then three of these um, silicone tip darts and I will be showing you the damage done in between each shot and I already have I think somewhere around here uh, a close-up view of the box in my phone so I'll be loading up the three hot glue domes first followed by the three pink foam Stefans Okay, so you can see three pink foam Stefans and three hot glue domes. I'll be firing off the hot glue domes first. So here we go. Everything will be fired off at seven pumps each, so just to be fair. This is about two feet away or three feet away. Here we go. So now I'll show you guys the damage done on the box. Okay, so um, this is the back. This one, we don't count this one, but it broke through, or at least it penetrated and it cracked the box on two of the shots. One of the dart got stuck over here. So a uh, very clean hole over here and here. All right. Next. Ping foam Stefan, here we go. Second one. Last one. So uh, as you can see, now I have another three more holes. One, two, three. So all these were made by the um, ping pong felt tip Stefans. And uh, well, seems that it actually penetrated through one side one of the one of the darts did so that's quite amazing uh, ping pong Stefan felt tip by the way okay finally we have these new type silicone tips and I'll be loading them into the attack okay good it's still recording okay so here we go Okay, that's one. Two. And the last one, I'll purposely try to aim around this area because it's relatively clean over there. So here we go. Three. So uh, this this dart was actually stuck. If you can see the close-up camera, okay, I'm going to turn that one off right now. Okay, done. So um, this dart tip actually broke off. It was stuck halfway. So I'm going to put this one aside. Uh, well, apparently one of the hot glue domes actually flew all the way through, came out. So let's count the holes on the back. Seems that it's only penetrating power for just uh, the first layer of cardboard not two and um, I'm gonna open it up now I mean I'm gonna take this one out of course oh the tip broke off too that's kinda sad I'm running out of hot glue domes 
and uh, yep, we have all our dots and the tips. So um, one of the tips came off. I just grab it, keep my hand in the frame. Oh, okay, all the all of the uh, silicone tips broke off, so we have silicone tip forms, uh, just the blanks, and here's a third tip, third silicone tip, and uh, apparently. Okay, it's got damaged. Slug got damaged, and um, one of the slugs. Oh, well, the other two seem to be fine. Okay, the other two slugs are fine. Only one of them is a bit damaged. So slugs are a good way to go if you want darts that will last you a long time. Uh, I have one hot glue dome that is fine. Two actually. Um, two of the hot glue domes are fine. One have the tip broke off. All right. So um, whether you think these uh, silicone tip darts are safe or not it's up to you I have not shown you the front of the box yet so you should check out the front of the box alright the original one was made by the hot glue dome and all of these were either um, well I guess this one is actually made by the silicone tip <laughs> and as you can see it's a generally relatively bigger hole than the others especially this one this was created by the silicone tip so um, yeah it's got strong impact in I mean from what I believe it's got a very very strong impact on the first wall of the cardboard but not strong enough to break through the second wall probably due to the um, I guess the sponginess or the uh, softness of the dart itself but as you can see uh, the dart tips only make a difference you can still pierce through cardboard at a close range like that and um, well I guess the only safe thing I could say is that since it being soft it has a less chance of I guess breaking your skin you know so um, you guys can formulate your own opinions based on this don't take my word for it if you need to conduct your own test and uh, yeah see you in the next part bye welcome back so I hope that you like that part of the video <laughs> yeah I hope it gave you more insight so uh, my final verdict on the silicone tip darts they are soft for sure when they hit something or when they hit something solid they will rebound like hell but um, I guess against something like cardboard the sheer strength of it because of the weight you know because of the weight of it on its tip it will still pack a punch uh, the the thing that bugs me the most about the silicon tip darts is because um, the tips are actually kind of I guess they're kind of long and they protrude out quite far and because they're made of silicone so you guys know the texture of silicone they're kind of grippy uh, they have a problem feeding to hoppers and most of my blasters are hopper blasters and that's one of the gripes that I have I am still trying to find a way to work around that or find a work around if you guys have a suggestion please share it with me because I'm running out of ideas on how to use those darts with my hopper um, when I do have a blaster that is able to force a dart out like for example the VTMB if I have the VTMB because of the sheer amount of pressure and the sheer amount of air volume the darts will just fire anyway um, half the time the tips will break off the the foam body so I'll be left with just a blank and the tip and that kind of makes all my effort of darts making go to waste alright um, the I guess the okay we're down to the we're down to the last three questions okay the next two comes from nerfed ponage so nerfed ponage first question is psych do you like drac uh, if you're talking about draconis I like Draconis, I think he's cool. If you're talking about Draconical, no, I don't like him. Can you show us your wall loadout? I can't show you my wall loadout. My blasters are all over the place. And my wall loadout usually changes. So I just guess I'll just tell you guys what I usually bring to a wall. Safety goggles or mask. And this is my, uh, my trademark mask. So it's pink and with a green uh, uh, a green I guess band-aid so yeah I miss my crew man the foam phonetics crew yeah I don't know if I have the patch that I want to show you guys is it here I no I don't have access to a, a patch I have a foam phonetics patch somewhere uh, so yeah I used to have a kind of like a clan but uh, most of them are just not into nothing anymore so um yeah these this mask safety goggles a uh, huge bottle of water yeah those are the most important things I bring to a wall now uh, I used to bring a long shot um, moderately modded long shot no brass beach or anything uh, now if you ask me uh, it really depends on what kind of wall 
uh, if it's a CQB war or a I guess not so I guess when when the playing field is not so big I would bring things like maybe the elite alpha trooper or um, generally I'll bring my hopper quad shot or, 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 or triple shot the hopper one or the man cannon the hand cannon um, that's like my primary and my secondary I have a pair of those so yeah um, if homemades are allowed I'd probably bring my rev shot or I bring the R3 uh, if it's a long range war I bring my AT3K the overhaul one made by Atani or the BTMB uh, I also will bring along maybe my AirTech 2000 which I recently modded and I'll be showing you guys uh, I'll, I'll be showing it to you guys soon uh, that will be my I guess my secondary weapon not really secondary but my backup primary so uh, I don't really have much of a secondary uh, unless you want to count my lock and load or maybe even just a simple night finder I guess uh, bring along a couple of slings that I can attach to my blaster so I can strap it on uh, I have two shotgun uh, holsters to house my uh, either my long shot or my hand cannon and in the near future the rough cut hint hint <coughs> um, whole bunch of clips I like the 18 dart drums I have about five of them um, it depends on whether the war is a Stefan war or not and then uh, yeah a drop leg dump pouch if you guys don't know what that is <clears throat> the one I use in particular is called the grab it pouch I actually got it off I think it was a site I can't remember what it was anymore but I bought a pair they used to have a deal of uh, buy buy a pair and you have a left-handed and a right-handed version so I always wear the right-handed version because uh, my left hand is always busy with handling the blasters so yeah uh, grab it pouch Th that's my wall loadout if the need requires to I would wear a vest I have two vests uh, one is a nerf tactical vest and one is a real tactical vest so that really depends on the situation so the last question comes from ermine 7 and ermine 7 asks can you please give another gift away please and four question marks so can I please give another giveaway please I will be giving another giveaway I will be conducting another giveaway um, expect that in about a couple of videos time so you guys stay tuned okay I'll tell you one of the rules straight off the bat it's you have to be subscribed to me that's all so uh, that ends my episode this episode episode 20 of Pwned I hope you enjoyed it I know it was a lot of talking a lot of rambling but I hope you enjoyed the box destruction and it's you know so now I'm left with like a whole bunch of just uh, <laughs> blue foam blanks Something special is coming up in episode 21. I promise you guys, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching once again. Have a great week ahead. And don't be surprised if episode 21 comes in slightly earlier than usual. Peace.